Thank you for joining today's session. I will demonstrate the workflow and the systems that I use, different ways that you may use the systems. And also uh, try to answer any question you may have on the systems and techniques. I am Sagar Nandi. I am the designer and developer of Q trading systems and techniques. These are the systems that I will use today. I used to work in IT, mostly in Singapore, about 20 years. I have retired now and I'm living in Thailand, trading stocks and stock options, mostly in the USA market and sometimes in the global markets as well. I regularly share my trade analysis in the traders forum, sagarnandi.com on my Twitter page, Sagarnandi, and also YouTube channel, Trading Profitably. All of these are open to the public and you are most welcome to visit them. Let me go through the disclaimer first. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by the people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. I set up this session primarily to answer all the queries you may have on Q systems and techniques. You may type your questions in the chat panel. If I don't see any question, I may use the session to demonstrate different workflows that you may use. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move on to the live system. Let me first explain the different systems that I use. What are the components? One is Thomson Reuters icon or Metastock Zenith. You can see their bar at the top. I have docked it to the top. So it is always there at the top. There is a search box that helps me to identify the writer symbol for any stock that is of my interest. Not only for a stock, but also for any other kind of instrument that I may want to review. I can find that symbol using this smart search button. That is the first component of the trading systems that I use. The second is TradeStation. You can see TradeStation is running. I use TradeStation for USA market as the charting platform, scanning platform, and also as the platform for placing my order for the USA market. Sometimes for the USA market, I also use Metastock. It has certain advantages over restriction. And for global markets, I always use Metastock. Restriction cannot be used for non-USA markets efficiently. For global markets, I always use Metastock as the charting platform. That is for technical analysis. Restriction and Metastock, restriction has the trading system Q Elite and Metastock has the trading system Q Global. Those are for technical analysis and for scanning of trading opportunities. Then I use the component Q Edge for sector industry rotation analysis. It can calculate the sector industry rotation in real time. Streaming is on now, you can see, and 
I have set up the update frequency to five minutes. You can set it to five minutes or 10 minutes because it is sector level, industry level, and fundamental scorecard level. It is not required to set it to tick by tick. Fundamentals or industry information doesn't update so fast. That is to save bandwidth. If you wanted, you could set it to full real time without any throttling. Here I have multiple tabs showing the sector scorecard and heat map, industry scorecard and heat map, and then stock scorecard and heat map. I can drill down from sector to industry to stock with the click of a button, or I may start with a stock and using these smart icons here, I could look up its industry scorecard and stock scorecard as well. I also use the insight tab, which goes through all the stocks in the stock scorecard and calculates valuable insights. Some of them are straightforward, best performing stocks and worst performing stocks. And then as you scroll down, you will have more and more complex insights like best performing growth stocks, worst performing growth stocks, best performing optimally valued stocks, that is undervalued stocks, worst performing overvalued stocks, etc. You may look at the stocks in the inside and then look for trading opportunities there. That may save time sometimes because you don't have to identify which stocks are overvalued and then look for the worst performers in them. It goes through all the stocks in the stock scorecard and does the insight calculation for you. For any particular category, you can click the icon on the left side to calculate it again. Some people are fond of trading growth stocks. So we have these two categories for growth stocks. Growth stocks can go up very fast like a rocket and they can fall down also like a rock. Growth stock traders may focus on these categories, whereas value stock traders may focus on these two categories for bullish and bearish trades respectively. That is why there are separate icons to calculate each category. When I click a button, it is going through all the stocks in the stock scorecard and checking which stocks are the best performers and undervalued. That is the sector industry rotation analysis tool. It also has a stock scorecard, but not all the stocks that are possible in the USA market. What if you wanted to analyze the fundamentals of a stock that is not in this list? For that, I use the stock PR analysis tool, fundamental analysis and PR analysis tool here. I can type the stock symbol of any stock in any country actually, not only in the USA, and get to analyze not only its fundamentals in isolation, but comparative analysis with its peers and peers being from whatever relationship I choose. It can be industry, similar industries, sector, country, or even global, which may be used by funds to compare a stock with its global peers. For people like us, individual traders, mostly industry is enough, especially for the USA market. For other markets like Singapore, sometimes even for India, just choosing industry may not give many peers. Then you may have to expand the relationship to similar industries or to sector. Another tool that I sometimes use, not an essential tool, but 
still useful is to look at how the global markets are doing. Here, you can choose from any of the countries listed here and see how they are doing. If you want to look up a country that is not here and you know the symbol, for example, if you want to look up Singapore, that is the Straits Times Index, you can type the index STI, that is the Thomson Reuters symbol for Singapore Straits Times Index, and you can do a, an analysis on the index constituents to have a look at how the stocks are doing and how the index is doing as a well. whole. Lastly, when I use Metastock, I have all these scan programs. They generate the result in a tabular format. But this is not easy to read like in Trade Station Radar, that is QSonar dashboard. In QSonar dashboard, if I type a symbol in Trade Station Radar, In real time, it will calculate the different columns and provide valuable insight. Some of them are related to actual trade setup. These are the ones marked in capital case, uppercase. That is bounce, headwind, box, go with flow, each designed for a different market condition. And there are other useful information, all the columns light up in real time. And in all Q systems, green or cyan indicates bullish, magenta, red indicates bearish, bullish or upper side for green cyan, magenta red bearish or lower side and yellow is neutral. Because Metastock didn't have a feature like radar, I developed a system where after running Q sonar, for example, I ran these sonars. Let's pick up this one, short if down, and I ran it on more than 1,000 stocks. I can copy the data now put it in Trade Finder using this smart download. And you can see from the legend here, red column means today's insight. I can also look at yesterday's insight, this week's or even previous week's. These are the stocks from the India market. I ran the scans on India market. India market has closed already. So if I am looking for breakouts, then I can see a lot of stocks. In fact, 140 stocks in the Indian market. How many stocks was my starting universe? About 1,000 plus stocks. Those were the stocks that are liquid enough in the Indian market. And out of that, 140 are breaking out. Is it upside or downside? Downside, because my scan was short if down. And this is a very nice alternative to trade stations radar. In fact, in some way, Finder is even better because what I can also do, I can look at the cumulative number of signals and sort by that simply by double clicking on the cumulative number and I can see this stock, ARCY.NS, it has five bearish signals today. One is bearish pressure, one is breakout, one is retracement, meaning it was in a downtrend, tried to go up and then fell down again. Possible go with flow setup, also squeeze release. There is no green cell, so there was no signal yesterday, no blue, therefore no additional signal this way, I see a box setup came previously. 
Whereas if you see the next row, it also has five signals today. Breakout, retracement to resistance and falling down again. Possible go with flow setup, possible bounce setup, squeeze release. Yesterday, it touched a memory resistance. So we know yesterday touched memory resistance. Today, it broke below memory support. Even before going to the chart, you can visualize that it was inside a triangle pattern probably and now breaking down. This week, it also gave a reversal candle. This is pretty useful. Sometimes you may also analyze the signals over one week period, the cumulative signals. And now you can see this symbol UNNI has the maximum number of bearish signals over one week, eight signals. Some of them, the red colors came today, green colors came yesterday, there is no blue, yellow is previous week. These are the systems I use. Again, I always keep Thomson Reuters running, that is Metastock Zenith, so I can find the symbols quickly. You can see the SPY percentage change also. I can always see it. It is docked to the top. Then I use the registration platform, technical trading system for searching from for trade ideas using the radar. Or I can use the scans also, but scans in registration can be used only after the candle close, so after the day ends whereas sonar can be used intraday as well. And of course, all the Q system charts are available here. For USA market, as well as global market, I also use Q global on Metastock, again, technical trading system. And then to complete the 360 degrees analysis, that is sector rotation, industry rotation, I use the rotation analysis tool or Q edge. I use the PR analysis tool or Q Vita. Sometimes I use Q index to do global indices analysis. And Q finder is a nice alternative that you may use instead of using radar. Radar is not there in Metastar. Those are the system components, and those are enough for my trading. You have, if you have any question on any of these components or the workflows, you may type them in the chat panel. And let me continue with the possible workflows. One of the most powerful workflows is top down. Is it true? It is true, but it is not most powerful. It is like bottom up analysis done in reverse order. Whichever way you start your analysis from the top sector level or rather market level or from the bottom, that is from the scanning the trading opportunities, finally you may carry out all the steps. Check if the market sector industry fundamental technical forces are aligned. So not that top down is more powerful than bottom up. So long as you are carrying out all the levels analysis and aligning your trades with all the levels, both are equivalent. Some people favor top down, some people favor bottom up. I tend to use both. Let's look at top down analysis. This is live data. Today, we can see energy financials are the worst performers. Industrials, consumer discretionary are the best performers. Energy was already weak for a while. Therefore, if I'm going to look for a short candidate, I'm not so much interested to look into energy. There is a question, I'll come back to that, good question. 
for financials you can see it was stronger earlier and now weakening and the pace column show acceleration deceleration again in all our systems cyan green is bullish magenta red is bearish so here in pace columns i can see deceleration magenta will be deceleration cyan will be acceleration financials is some sector where you may look for a shorting candidate before the session started i didn't know that financials was going to be weak today but, but i already put some symbols to discuss one of them pfsi happened to be financials why did i want to discuss pfsi here i am diverting from top down analysis pfsi was a stop in a list that I received, I think one week ago, as part of a list of stocks that people were interested in buying. And this trading group is pretty robust trading group, very experienced traders are there. Still, I tend to look at them. Their styles may be different from mine and my style may be different from yours. Whenever I get a list of stocks and if I have time, I tend to put them through my analysis. So what I did, I put PFSI. In the sonar when I received it. And what did I see? At that time also it was at pendulum or price extreme high and it was going up. Now also it is true. As of today, because this dashboard radar is calculating everything in real time, as of today, I can see the relative performance is red. That means it is underperforming the market. Let's have a look at the stocks technical charts using the standard Q weekly daily at a glance template. On the left is the backdrop chart template used on weekly interval. On the right is the hop on or entry chart template used on the daily interval. Why did I decide to look at this stock from several days ago? I think I received it from the trading group one week ago. Why did I want to keep an eye on it? Is that it had a massive bullish run. The previous earnings was here. The up move started well before that. And since the earnings, it moved up even more. From the bottom, from the starting price to the top, it gained by more than 50%. That is all good for the stock PFSI. Interestingly, when I received this stock as a possible buy candidate, that was probably on this week, which was at the very top. At that time, I noticed there was a bearish headwind signal that is a possible reversal signal in the daily chart. Whenever this signal comes, our guideline is always to be cautious. And if we had a long position, our guideline is to place a trailing stop. I didn't take any long position earlier this came from a list when the price was right at the top. And that time I noticed it already displayed a bearish headwind and starting to move sideways. Earlier, this copper color relative performance was very strong, then it was moving sideways. So it was not very strong anymore. Then further, I noticed it created a memory resistance. Red color means resistance. That means it also gave me a lower high. Yesterday at market close, it gave me a magenta color candle. If I have a lower high magenta color candle, I am bearish on the stock as far as the daily chart is concerned. And in this case, there was a bearish headwind that alerted me of possible reversal even before that. Now, when I looked at the magenta candle yesterday, that is during the weekend, the 
weekly was not magenta. So if I applied the unambiguous checklist for trend following trade setup, that checklist conditions, all the conditions would not be meet. Only one condition would not be meet. That is the weekly was not magenta. So I decided to keep an eye on this stock as a possible shorting candidate at the very top. That was my technical analysis. And what was the way I identified this stock? It came from a list that somebody gave me. Being part of a trading group, I received that list. It came from there. It didn't come from top down or bottom up. However, as I am going to demonstrate, I still carried out a health check of the stock following all the levels. So technically it was looking weak to me. This is PFSI. My next step was to check out which exact industry it belongs to and also do a fundamental analysis. Now for fundamental analysis, I'm not using any website. This is a tool I use. It connects to Thomson Reuters. That is either using icon Thomson Reuters icon or using Metastock Zenith and retrieves everything in real time. I have set up my relationship as industry. So it is first validating my symbol pfsi.o. The subscript stands for ordinary stocks. And if there is a server error, I have to pause and play again. The server error comes from Thomson Reuters. Now see, it is saying stock not found. Two things I'm going to do. First, I'm going to go to the sector industry rotation analysis and pause it because that is also taking considerable bandwidth, analyzing all the sectors, industries, stocks in real time that I don't need. And coming back to the peer analysis tool, I'm going to check the exact symbol. And I can see it is not pfsi.o, O usually stands for ordinary, but it is dot K. I think K stands for consolidated. So I'm going to update the symbol properly, PFSI dot K. And that is why I keep the search box running all the time. Other than looking at SPY if I want to. Now it has connected with Thomson Reuters, retrieve all the PRs, 46 PRs based on some market cap, minimum closing price, and minimum average volume filter. Explain what the stock does, and also it has shown me the industry, thrift and mortgage finance. Let me look at the industry. Clicking the search icon will take me to the industry rotation analysis. I am keeping an eye on the chat and any question I see, I will keep on answering as I progress. I'll keep an eye. Thank you for all the queries. When I come to the industry, I see it is weak and it is obvious. All the tools I use are very visual. It was cyan before and turning magenta. And this is what I saw yesterday also. That is why even before the market open, I already analyzed this stock's industry to be weak. Technically, it was looking weak. And now it is time to look at the fundamentals also. Other than retrieving the industry, sector, country, and some basic information, like dividend, which is not there, next earnings date, it has some other valuable insight. One is today, as of now, it is up a little bit. Over previous two days, it was down. Over previous five days also, it was down. Over previous 10 days also, it was down. We saw that pattern in the technical charts also that it was starting to decline. And here we have the percentages. Another useful piece of information is it is very close to 52 week high. If we can short the stock at that high point, then we will have a very lucrative opportunity provided the stop loss is narrow. The technical chart showed us that stop loss was narrow, isn't it? Let me go back to the technical chart. 
it is falling down with lower high if i am going to place the stop i may place it right above the memory resistance line entry price may be here if you are using intraday charts then the stop will be even narrower so let me move to the intraday chart that is using the q fine tune template in the morning session i use 5 minutes interval now it is morning session so almost lunch time eastern standard time so it is using 10 minutes that is fine for demonstration you can see the early range high and early range low lines already formed there are also some automatically drawn smart trend lines memory support lines if it can fall below this memory support lines it will also fall below early range low that is the point we can initiate an intraday short using early range breakout technique in a stock that is already bearish from our weekly daily analysis however in this case i see there is another automatically drawn pivot line here red color pivot means previous days low so why don't i wait a little more i may be shorting it if price goes below previous day slow for the day my stop can be just above early range high now in this case i see there is a memory resistance just above early range high so i will place the stop above the memory resistance so my intraday stop loss will be this much using a 10 minute chart however this is not meant to be a day trade it is meant to be a swing or position trade therefore the reward risk ratio will be very attractive if i can use the intraday chart to take the trade going back to peer analysis it is at 52 week high what i was explaining that if i have a low risk entry opportunity this may end up being a very lucrative short fundamentally is the stock weak it is overvalued valuation in magenta magenta is always weak so it is overvalued stock it has increasing earnings growth in the latest quarter the yearly periods earnings growth is whip showing between positive to negative to positive three year earnings growth compound aggregate earning growth was positive two year was negative last year is positive again now i consider a stock to be fundamentally weak either if it is overvalued which will usually happen in a stock that is at the very top that is true for this case it is at the very top we saw it in the chart and we can see it from the 52 week high proximity it is very high so we expect the stock to be overvalued and if the stock has gone up so much normally i will expect the earnings in the latest quarter to be good and we saw in the technical charts the price started to go up before earnings probably somebody knew something and then it continued to move up so after the earnings result it went up further all those facts are in sync with each other as an overvalued stock i am okay to short it so i have found some forces from the fundamental level that is overvaluation that is favoring the short i find the industry weakening and it is one of the weakest today isn't it nice and technically on the weekly daily chart it is looking weak weekly is starting to turn magenta you may consider taking a shot at the end of the day or even better i prefer if it goes below the red pivot line on the intraday chart during the trading hours what i demonstrated is that even though i got a symbol got to know about this stock from another person i still carried out the same steps sector industry analysis fundamental analysis technical analysis what i call 360 degrees analysis and found a possible shorting opportunity quite lucrative one let's continue with the top down analysis again we saw that financials is weak 
I'm refreshing the data again to get back all the sectors. Financials is weak today. So if I carried out similar analysis, finding shorting opportunities, then I'll call it top down here now. From financials, I drill down to all the industries. There are multiple financials industries. Some of them are strong, like multi-sector holdings. I can sort by double clicking and focus on only the ones that are the weakest. So let me focus on the top five. These are the weakest. I have selected multiple rows. If I click this smart button, I can drill down into all the stocks of all these industries. And I, you can see there are several stocks that are overvalued. Because the sector is weak, these industries are weak, I'm interested in looking at the stocks that are falling because I'm not going to buy. So I see these are the stocks that are down now. Let me choose the stocks that are down by, let's say more than 0.7% and focus only on them. Using the smart buttons, I have only those financial stocks that are down today in the industries that are weak today. And now I'm going to use the smart filter to look at the stocks that are overvalued. Why I'm looking at overvalued stocks? Because this sector was, I should look at the industries. So the, at least some of the industries were stronger earlier. So the stocks went up. When the stocks went up, they might have been overvalued. Those may give the best shorting opportunities, like the stock that we saw just now. So we are left with this handful of stocks. Further, if I have an opportunity to find a stock that has also negative earnings growth, I find two such stocks. These are the stocks I'll be happy to short provided they give technical shorting opportunity. From here, I can click the chart icon. I have set my trading system to Q Global. If I set the trading system to Q Global, clicking the icon and placing my cursor at the proper place will open those two stocks automatically. They are integrated. This is the first one, FSB because it has a memory trend line support, I'm not going to consider shorting. And how did I come to this stock? I came from weak sector, weak industry, weak fundamental that is overvalued and reducing earnings growth. So I'm not going to consider buying here, only going to consider shorting because there is a trend line support nearby. I'm not going to short it. This is the other stock. This is still in an uptrend, so I'm not going to short it as well. If it breaks below this memory support, that is the time I may consider shorting it, not now. So I carried out one step, one iteration you can say, of top-down analysis starting from financials to industries, starting from sectors to industries to stocks, fundamentals and then technicals and I didn't find any trade setup. That is where the difference lies, the major difference between top down and bottom up. When I'm doing a bottom up analysis, including the scans in Q Global or using radar in trade station Q Elite, I start with the possible trade setups because I'm not going to buy or short something unless there is a technical signal. It often ends up being faster if I run the technical scan first. Otherwise, not, not rarely, quite often you may say, as I just demonstrated, we start with top-down analysis and then don't find any actual trading opportunity. So I demonstrated two workflows. One is if I get to know of a stock from some other source, I still carry out the same multidimensional analysis. I demonstrated the workflow for top down. Now I'm going to demonstrate the workflow for bottom up analysis. There is a question, how can we go from Metastock to these tools? These tools 
required metastock real time or thomson reuters icon or metastock zenith and the, these are q systems but it is required to have metastock real time if you are having metastock real time or metastock zenith you may drop me an email later if you have just the metastock charting platform that is not enough if it is metastock real time that is enough because metastock real time comes with metastock zenith which is a retail version of thompson writer's icon now it's called refinitive not thompson writer's property anymore they sold it out okay let's revisit i demonstrated two workflows one is I get a stock from somebody else. I carry out the 360 degrees analysis and then another workflow, top-down analysis. And as I showed, if you start with top-down, oftentimes you will get possible candidates, but that are not ready yet to trade. Whereas if I start with bottom-up, and I will demonstrate it using Q Elite, Q Global, both probably if I have time. Let me add a list of symbols to radar i'm going to use a list of symbols that i have that are priced between 5 to 50 and that have liquid options not only the stocks are liquid they have liquid options i have dropped them in sonar dashboard that is radar and it is going to calculate all the columns all the signals in real time why it is doing that it is necessary to have a look at what the market is doing because I demonstrated the use of sector level, industry level, fundamental level, technical level. At the highest level is the market level. And it's always, always usually in trading, it is not a good idea to use definite statements. However, one statement, I may use as a definitive statement that it is always good to keep an eye on what the market is doing and trade with the market. What I do in one of the registration panels or in Metastock also, I may do that. Whichever country I'm trading, I keep an eye on the major indices or ETFs. Here I'm using the four market ETFs and both in Q Global and Q Elite, we can change the periodicity easily. As I mentioned in my previous webinars, I am bearish in IWM from this point when it hit the memory resistance and my short trade on IWM using options is doing very, very well. I have already booked some profit and the rest will also close with profit. Even if it starts to go up, I'm not going to let the remaining position turn into loss. I could short it at the very top and discuss it in the webinar at that time. I don't have the habit of explaining profitable trades after the fact. If you watch my videos, I only explain profitable or loss making trades if I had shared it earlier, either in webinar or in Twitter. So this is one opportunity that I shared earlier. In the weekend market roundup, I mentioned that none of the ETFs are giving me a trading opportunity right now. There is a memory support in QQQ also. However, I'm not going to look for any buying opportunity overall. The market is looking weak. But that doesn't mean that it is <laughs> giving a shorting opportunity today. At least the ETFs, they are not. So I keep an eye on the five or 10 minute interval using the fine tune chart. And sometimes I can switch to daily interval to see if they are hitting any major support or resistance and the memory trend lines as well as watermark support resistance lines, those are horizontal pivot lines, they act as excellent support resistance. They have no lag, unlike the moving averages. That's why they provide 
in my view, much better support resistance than moving averages. The trend lines, that is the memory lines and the watermark levels, that is the pivot levels, they are with zero lag. You may also look at weekly. Weekly, you can see that IWM is magenta now, QQQ is magenta and QQQ is at a support. That's another reason I'm not going to short QQQ right now. During the day, I keep an eye on the 10 minute chart. If I am watching the market, I'm in Thailand, it is not in the USA time zone, opposite time zone, but for the period I am trading, I keep an eye on that. Another thing I keep an eye on is the market breadth. Here I am also looking at QQQ and SPY along with the NASDAQ cumulative tick, NYSE tick. Then some more breadth information, advanced decline for NASDAQ NYSE and up down volume NASDAQ NYSE. This gives you very useful information for intraday purpose. It's not going to be very, very useful for actual placing of your trade in a particular stock, but it is useful very much to see what the market is doing. And today, as of now, and I am seeing this from the beginning, market is indecisive. This is previous day's close for QQQ and SPY. Today, price opened higher, but not above previous day's high, isn't it? Let me compress them. Previous day's high is higher, the green pivot previous day's high is here. So it's not a gap up open, it's an open higher in the middle of previous day's range. Then the early range high and low lines form. And it went above early range high. So that is bullish as far as the actual ETFs are concerned. After open, it went up. Whereas advanced decline, is actually going down after open for both NASDAQ and NYC. If you are day trading or if you are precisely entering swing trades, like I explained in the case of this stock, the finance stock PFSI, if you are thinking of entering that trade, looking at this market breadth using 10 minute interval, will help you see that is the market really bullish or bearish or mixed. I see the actual ETFs went up, however, advanced decline, decline. And NYSE up down volume is showing that more volume is bearish right from the beginning. It never went up like the number of stocks that advanced versus decline. And NASDAQ is showing it is having no, no direction also. So market is not really bullish if you look under the hood. That is the use of this market breadth inside using the tick information as well. Those who are very fast traders, which I don't recommend, may use the tick divergence and other information. Just the tick divergence is not enough to take a reversal trade, but there are certain nice things about this press information, that is this plot and this plot, this plot, they have no lag. The tick divergence also has no lag. The pivot levels have no lag and the trend lines have no lag. As you may see for intraday or real time time frame, unlike other systems or other traders, I don't just use the same chart and change the time frame from daily to intraday. I use totally different charts where I use zero or almost zero lag like indicators for intraday time frame. I don't just change the backdrop template or the entry template from weekly daily to intraday. The intraday time frame template is totally different. Only with zero lag, like that helps me precisely enter a trend. And by the way, I'm back to PFSI. Now I have looked at the market level also, though it went up and from the headline you can see at the top, SPY is up 0.53%, 0.54 fluctuating, but it is not really bullish. So I am happy to take a shot in PFSI if it goes below the red pivot. 
those are the things that you may look at market level sector industry fundamental technical and it doesn't take time isn't it if you have a visual system now i was spending some time while the sonar was calculating we saw that market is not bullish so let me look at some possible bearish candidates and now this is using bottom up analysis i see bx is one of the stocks that is breaking down what else can i see it is breaking down since open it is down 2.8 percent since previous days close down 2.9 percent and though it is just before lunch time eastern standard time it has already displayed heavy bearish pressure it is already in a downtrend shown by the direction column relative performance showing that it is underperforming those are the insights i can get so as it may be a breakout trading candidate so now i can look at its chart and indeed it's a breakout trade i am not very fond of breakout trades unless they give a low risk entry opportunity here it is not giving me a low risk entry it is indeed breaking down below the memory supports in weekly daily both how far for my technique the stop will be far above here or at least somewhere here which is far above the current price so i am not going to short it but it is indeed breaking down and it is breaking down after displaying a bearish headwind in daily and weekly both so i would be cautious in this stock if i had a long position right from the time when the bearish headwind came in daily i wouldn't exit the trade but put a trailing stop and i will get stopped out probably somewhere here now i am not going to take a shot because stop is far away if the price tries to go up little bit and come down again that will give me a go with flow trend following short trade setup why it will give go with flow setup because the weekly is already magenta that will meet all the checklist conditions so bx at least if i had a long position i will be cautious let me look at uso gtx i am looking at the industry also one easy way is to insert a row and sort by industry semiconductors let's look at micron amu maybe it is already down significantly it is already down we know because we are regular traders interestingly again there was a bearish headwind at which point price came created a false upside breakout right before earnings and then after earnings it dropped and weekly also created a bearish headwind right before earnings so if i had a long position and many people were bullish on emu a strong company otherwise but it did drop sharply and today it is aching again breaking down it couldn't find robust support at this memory support however still it is far away from recent high for my technique to take a shot if i had a long i would be out already that is the way you can look for bottom up trading opportunities let me look at this stock ntnx another advantage of this radar that is dashboard sonar and also the founder is that it shows multiple signals across the column so for ntnx it's not only having a possible breakout signal but also a go with flow trend following short signal it was in an uptrend traffic light is red relative performance is weak today let's look at this stock also ntnx it is moving sideways sometimes when a stock moves sideways the candle colors may change but they don't indicate anything so i don't find any trade here that is the bottom up analysis those are the th techniques that you may use if you find a stock from another list another person you may carry out 360 degrees analysis or you may carry out the top down analysis starting from sector or you may carry out 
the bottom up analysis starting from sonar scan or radar or you may use the fourth approach that is starting with insight why don't we do that today market is mixed i cannot say market is bearish market is mixed and lately growth stocks are not doing well isn't it because we know this symbol i think fttty that is investors business daily i oh, know what is that symbol who will remember the symbol for fftty right fftty that is the symbol for ibd's 50 etf that ibd technique uses growth stocks for trading and it is bearish for quite some time you can see the relative performance sharply tilting down so it is bearish if it is bearish from the inside let's look at the worst performing growth stocks i click the button again it is now going through all the stocks identifying the growth stocks that is stocks that were having high growth in consecutive years three years and now today these are the 10 worst performers from that list you can see several of them are energy sector many of them but energy was weak already for a while now you can relate everything isn't it when we looked at the sector performance we already knew energy is weakest than financials and i mentioned energy is weak for a while so the best shorting candidates may not be there we are going to only look for shorts in the weak sectors so financials may be a better category if so when i'm looking at the insights i may not initially look at the energy let me look at the financials there are two financials stocks one is b core one is stl why don't i look at their charts first that is also a fast way of identifying trades and instantly now i have a trade setup let me look at the other stock this is near the watermark support that is b core so between the two i would prefer to short this one stl.n and with the click of a mouse i can look at the standard weekly daily to see if i indeed have a trading opportunity using real time analysis while it is loading the data why don't i look at its fundamentals it was stl.n stl.n the moment i change the symbol it is going to retrieve the stock information it belongs to regional banks and by clicking the microscope i can magnifying glass i can check the industry industry is weak instantly i know you can see from the color coding it is decelerating also and it is one of the weakest just the color code is enough going back to the peer analysis tool I can see it has a dividend next earnings 21st october far away enough to take a trade valuation is in the middle earnings growth is slowing down but still positive so it is still probably okay to short it not as good in terms of fundamental weakness or not as bad in terms of fundamental weakness as pfsi i think that was overvalued it is in the middle however the chart is looking bearish what are the signals we are getting from here as we saw we have a breakout candidate and we have a trend following go with flow short candidate and it is meeting the checklist conditions because the weekly is also yellow we have to be a little careful about that because it is just monday the weekly may change but looking at the fact that it was inside a triangle pattern breaking down with relative performance week i think this is a stock i will be willing to short if the day ends with a go with flow short and breakout signal that is it shouldn't go back up and end the day with a lower tail if it 
doesn't do that, doesn't end with a lower tail, this is a stock where I will be okay to short. Now, when I ran the peer analysis, it also showed me some breadth information. Let me look at that. You can see it is mixed. If it is very bearish, you will see more stocks are down than even more. Now, 14 up, 36 down, about one is to two point something ratio. Not very, very weak, but it is weak. It is weak overall. Over two days also, 10 up, 40 down. That was weaker over five days, 16 up, 33 down. That is also bearish over 10 days also bearish. So you can see from here, not only the industry is bearish from, from detail market breadth inside for this industry, which is regional banks, you see that it is weakening. So you may consider a short trade in this stock. Sterling Bank Corp. And some people are not comfortable shorting at minimum, they may protect their long position. Let's end today's session here. You may find more information about the systems from the books in my traders forum, sagarnandi.com. From the books menu, you can download all the books. And you can follow live market analysis for the USA market. Sometimes I post it also for the India market from the traders forum. You can follow me on the Twitter page with ID Sagandandi and also the YouTube videos, Trading Profitably channel. Let me end today's session here. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you again in my next session. I am traveling, traveling uh, this week, traveling this week. There is a festival in India. I am traveling for that festival to India. I may be back to Thailand after a couple of weeks. In between, if I am able to have high speed internet access, I'll continue with the weekend videos as well as the Wednesday webinars. I think I, I have this Wednesday's webinar also. I will leave for India after that. I look forward to seeing you in that as well. Thank you once again. Have a great week and trade profitably.